Hey what's up everyone, it's time for a new video and this one will be another Arch video and this time I'm uh, going to install Arch Linux on my 2013 MacBook Air. Let me give you a bit of a background on why I'm doing this. So Linux was the first operating system I used on the first old PC I got from my dad which was a Pentium 3 with 450 megahertz or something like that and uh, I was running SUSE 9 on there or 9.1 so Linux was the operating system I uh, used first and I learned doing the PC stuff and everything with it I used Linux for my main OS until maybe four or five years ago or something and uh, I had Windows only for gaming and stuff like that and then I discovered uh, OS X and MacBooks because uh, we had one MacBook Pro in school, one 15 inch MacBook and we did a lot of stuff with it like recording the school band or stuff like that and uh, doing some video work in iMovie and, uh, and it, w it was a lot of fun and the other laptops in school were just crappy old things that didn't work really well and they were really really slow yeah and then in comparison there was this macbook pro which was just the coolest laptop ever <laughs> i saw at the time at school and yeah that's why why i always wanted to try um mac os x uh, for myself uh, and at home but i never could afford <laughs> an apple computer next thing i did was maybe four or five years ago i built uh, a new pc and i uh, made a hackintosh uh, out of it and then I used this PC for two or three years and then I bought um, this MacBook Air when I could afford it because I was working and studying. Yeah, I've been using it for three years now, I think. And uh, deep in the inside I'm st I still like Linux a lot and that's why I want to, um, to try it out on this machine, which I also like a lot. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Let's go ahead and um, install Arch. I just found a screenshot of SUSE 9.1. Maybe some of you guys also did use it. Uh, that's what it looks like. It's from 2004 and uh, it's it's running KDE um, 3. something. Uh, I'm not sure which one. But yeah, that's what it looks like. That Those were the icons and yeah, it's a bit of a throwback. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> Okay, I hope the angle is uh, not too bad. Um, I've put the laptop down here. Uh, normally it sits right up here and is connected to the monitor. Um, but for the installation I just want to have the laptop by itself. I'm not going to install it directly on the SSD. Um, instead, uh, I have one of these little things here uh, where you can put a micro SD card in and then you can put the adapter uh, into the SD card slot on the MacBook and it's completely flush in there so that's nice I have normally a 128 GB SD card in there and uh, now I'm putting another 64 GB in there uh, just for testing it out it will be a, a lot slower than using the SSD but uh, for the first test I think that's fine I also have a USB stick with Arch on there so Let's put it up, hold down the option key. Let me put in my password. Okay, and then we have uh, our arch stick here. Um, another thing, I've connected Ethernet uh, via the Thunderbolt adapter because this one seems to work out of the box um, with Linux, so let's go ahead. Okay, so we are in the system, so I'm uh, following the beginner's guide on Arch and I also found a special installation guide for this machine. I'm first going to do the basic stuff like setting the keyboard and the... Right, so I've set up the keyboard, internet is working, so, um, so now let me show you the guide I'm using. Okay, so thanks to Pandero, uh, which has the repository Arch on Air. On here there's a, a nice procedure with steps with all the things you have to do so uh, creating the partitions and uh, yeah we're gonna do that together now so uh, so let's first list all the devices all right so i found the sd card it's now here there I just put it out back in and yeah now it's working so let's get into partitioning the sd card so let's make 
mache das so eine GPT Partition Table. Make a partition. And the first one we need is a 128 megabyte uh, Apple HFS Plus partition. So the next one will be 256 megabytes uh, boot system. And the third one is just the rest. And let's go ahead and make part X4 229 megabyte. 2685. Let's make part X4 100%. Okay, then we maybe should also set one boot on. Okay, and that should be it. Nice. Okay, so that worked. Now let's go ahead and format them. Make FS at X4 dev SCP2. SCP3. Now let's mount F SCP3, choose the main system to mount, and let's make dear. Let's make dear uh, mount boot and mount the boot partition, which is SCP2, to mount. Nice, that's all then. So let's go ahead with the installation. So let's install the base packages. Okay, nice, so that's done. Now um, let's generate FS up. Okay, and let's optimize it for SSD performance. Okay, that's all then. Uh, now let's go into the newly installed Arch. Let's first set a new password. Now I'm just setting up the boring stuff like uh, the language and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna cut this out. It's all in the beginner's guide and it's not complicated or special, special stuff. So um, yeah, I'm leaving it out in the video. So now it's uh, getting a little bit interesting again. Uh, let's first install Grub. So we're installing Grub. EFI x68 c4 let's install that let's configure grub now there's a setting we have to set which otherwise could could cause freezes so um, it's all in the in the guide from github so um, I'm just gonna insert insert it there and it's root flags um, save that there's also this setting which they suggest to add. Grub disable submenu yes. Otherwise there should be a problem problem. So boot grub grub config grub make stand alone. Oops. Whoopsie. No, I'm having a weird problem and I don't know how to fix it. Basically, we have to run the command grub make standalone. Uh, let me zoom in. And this command cre creates a boot.efi uh, file, which we then have to copy to the correct location so that the MacBook efi bootloader can find uh, this file and boot Linux. But for some reason, um, I'm always getting a sec fault. Okay, so I found a solution. In the guide on GitHub, it, it shows you using uh, the compress uh, argument, um, but uh, that did not work for me. It, but it did work when I didn't use this compress thing. So now let's go ahead and uh, copy the file to the right location. Now let's uh, make a directory for the for this partition and mount it. Now we have to create this folder structure on that partition. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's first go in there, mount Mac, let's make the system and kernel, cd system, make the lib library, touch system version.plist 
and let's edit this file. And in there we are going to do a playlist. Oh, I have now to type in all of this stuff. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Um, it's just an XML file, uh, an XML file, a playlist file, and uh, yeah, that's all. Let's save it. Now let's copy the boot.e5 file to here. So we have both of these files now in this uh, folder. Now let's restart and see what happens. I'm holding down the option key. Ooh, and we have an E5 boot thingy here. Let's open it. What happens? Ooh, nice. Joe, booting Linux. <laughs> Ooh, okay, failed to mount boot. Something did happen, which is not good. Hmm. Uh, so I think I found my problem. I had a wrong FS sub uh, option. Um, I had a real time option on the boot um, on the boot partition, which is not available on X4. Uh, at least it seems like it. So uh, let's see what happens. Oh, I'm in, and that was a damn fast boot. <laughs> let's log in. Yes. Cool, okay, I'm happy. Yeah, I have to set up the, int uh, the, uh, the network now. So the internet is now working again. I'll show you how to install Wi-Fi later. But now let's install GNOME and GNOME Extra. So I'm installing GNOME now and um, then I'm going to test what's working like screen brightness, sound, um, uh, hibernation, keyboard backlight um, and then we set up that it goes to sleep automatically. Um, I want to uh, test this all with the graphical user interface first to see what what is working and uh, then we can also install the Wi-Fi drivers. Okay so GNOME is installed. Let's enable GNOME Display Manager and also start it. Oh, battery is empty. Okay, so new battery is in. Now let's start the GNOME Display Manager and nice. That's me. Let's enter my password. Let's sign in. Ooh, smooth. Oh, okay. I have to set. Ooh, ooh. That's funny, okay. The touchpad is completely uh, not working good. It depends where you touch, then it goes there. <laughs> okay, let me connect the mouse and fix this. Okay, so I connected the laptop to the monitor and it's working fine. Now let's fix the touchpad issue and uh, maybe first get the Bluetooth keyboard working. And for that I think I have to install the Broadcom driver which is also necessary for the Wi-Fi. Sorry for the angle. Um, let's start the terminal. Let's install DKMS first. Let's install the Broadcom wireless package for DKMS. It's uh, in the user repository. Okay, now let's install the package. Broadcom wireless slash DKMS. Okay, I had to install the uh, uh, Linux headers first, but now um, DKMS is working and uh, it's installing the Wi Fi. Now let's see if I have to reboot or something. Mm, probably. I'm now using the laptop in clamshell mode. The Bluetooth keyboard is working fine. All I had to do is uh, enable and start the Bluetooth service. Okay, so the next step is to install Network Manager. So let's go ahead. So the pacman slash s network manager and network manager applet, which is for GNOME. So uh, if you're using KDE, you don't have to install that. Let's enable and start the network manager. Okay, and now we have the Wi-Fi here, so uh, let's select the Wi-Fi, that's my Wi-Fi, connect. 
Okay, and I'm connected. That's very nice. So let's go ahead. Here's the Wi-Fi and here's the wire connection. So let's disable the wire connection. And uh, let's go ahead. Open the browser. And uh, for some reason this browser is so slow. Let me install Chromium first. So let's open Chromium. Um, let's go to Arch Linux. And we are there. Very nice. So Wi Fi is working fine. Um, and I also got the keyboard working. Um, let me show you what I did. I did go to region language. I enabled the uh, German local uh, settings and then I um, I added the input source German uh, Macintosh and now everything is working fine so the add symbol is at the right position I also can do the tilde which is at the right position and all the other um, other keys are also correctly mapped so sound is also working and I have a headphone connected no not maybe you can hear it I can also see the keyboard charging here 60% nice keyboard brightness and stuff like that yeah let's go ahead and uh, uh, test this stuff like the keyboard setting and brightness and stuff oh yeah one thing I totally forgot was uh, was the touchpad and the Ultra key there's a MacBook Pro article and uh, there it shows you how to install it so let's go ahead oopsie sudo I still uh, need to get used to the shortcuts and stuff oh I just read here that there's this driver which has uh, a feature where you can rest the thumb on the touch pitch which I'm using uh, which I'm doing all the time I'm going ahead and straightly uninstall the other one so this one is in the um, user repository so let's install this package um, and then we need to edit this one let's copy that and there. save it nice so is there anything else we need to keyboard backlight is working working suspend is working okay that seems to be it then there's another package package um, so this is the step-by-step -step guide I was using before which is called power top which should provide different power saving modes so I want to install that so let's install power top so if you run power top you can see or what is using most of your power for example um, simple screen recorder over here um, uses a lot of the CPU I think I, I get back to you if I used this a little bit and found out how to use it and how to get be, uh, better um, battery performance out of this. Oh, and it, and it suggests what to do here. Uh, for example, uh, I should enable SATA link power management for host zero. Okay, and stuff like that. That's cool. Alright guys, I made some progress. Um, the touchpad is now working. It was not enough to only install the driver, but, but you also have to um, add, add your uh, username to the group input. And then uh, the touchpad works perfectly uh, with this driver. Another thing I also did is to install the Intel video driver as well as the GNOME power manager because I found another guide on the internet, which is a very nice guide. Uh, I also put the link down in the description. Yeah, it's this guide. So, and this is, so there are some other steps I also want to do first. So here's the here's the part about the drag pad. Um, here the, um, he's also describing how to um, change the uh, scrolling direction, and then uh, he also enabled some kernel modules. So um, I'm also gon going to do that now. That's those two. Um, they are already installed. You don't have to install them. I just uh, checked it. Seems like you do this now differently. So I'm removing the file again. Instead I'm going uh, to do coreattempt.conf 
Corten Apple SMC So we have those mod modules enabled. So making the fans work is not uh, needed on this MacBook because uh, the fan is working. It's not controlled by the OS but by the EFI or BIOS. So so we probably also don't need those modules loaded. But uh, it's still nice to have the core temp module loaded so you can check your temperature. Let's fix lid closing to suspend. Edit this file and add the following lines at the bottom. Okay, bottom. Fixing suspend mode. Okay, so let's check here what uh, what is working with the suspend mode. This shows what is allowed to wake up your Mac. Here's the line. Ah. I have it enabled, lit enabled. We only want the last one to be enabled. So let's create a configuration file that disables. Okay, let's create that one and let's disable that. Okay, save that one. Okay, should be working after reboot. Now let's go to get into power saving. Uh, there's the thermal D. Let's check what this program does. Ah, it prevents machines from overheating. Um, I don't install ThermD because I'm pretty sure that the system should do that, by, uh, do that by itself already. If the hardware takes aggressive actions because uh, it, get, it gets too hot, uh, the ThermD is designed to, to deal with it before uh, that happens. But I'll first try without, without the ThermD. Now let's install CPU power. This one will enable us to select different power modes. So for example, power save CPU power and let's enable and let's also start. Let's check whether there's an applet for that. So I'm installing CPU power manager here and this gives us this applet installation required. Ooh, okay. Let's go to GitHub and see what we have to do there. Okay, so let's do the setup here. Okay, cool. So we now have an applet here, which shows us the current frequency. We can set the maximum frequency, minimum frequency. Uh, we can set to energy saver, for example. So this will keep it at 800 megahertz. And uh, yeah, that seems that seems pretty nice. I like that. Okay, cool. Okay, let's get back to our guide. There, yeah, and I also have the tool PowerTop already installed. Um, so let's create this file to launch it at startup. Copy that in there to launch it with systemd. Okay, let's enable it and also start it. Currently five, five and a half hours remaining with 77%. So Let's have a look how how good it will get when I used it for a while. So it's the next day. I use the machine now for a little while, most of the time in Arch. And it's working pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy. But uh, now the problems start. Um, the first thing is I wanted to edit this video uh, under Arch Linux. And I wanted to use PTV for that which is a very new and very nice um, video editor. Um, it doesn't have too much features yet, but uh, it's, it's done really well and the interface is clean and simple to use. But I have all kinds of problems with it. It's the newest version uh, I have installed here. And uh, for example, if I want to change the brightness on my clip here, uh, the video just gets black. And there's all kinds of other stuff that doesn't work like it's uh, like it should work. And also, it's very very slow and very laggy. So it's almost unusable. And I don't want to get into those other older um, um, video editors for Linux because Linux because most people say they have a lot of functions and a lot of functionality but uh, they are not easy to learn and uh, so I'm gonna edit this video 
in Final Cut again. Otherwise I really like the system so far. And uh, let me show you something that's really cool. I have to restart the machine for that. I'm back in the boot menu, but this time I have a really nice Arch Linux icon and uh, also the text for Arch Linux. So I show you how I did this. Uh, so let's boot back into system. So uh, um, what I did was I reformatted the first partition, the 128 megabytes partition, uh, to HFS plus, and uh, then. Um, I put a file named dot volu uh, volume icon dot icns there. You can also just uh, change the icon of th of this partition uh, under OS X with the finder. Uh, that will also work. Then I change the partition label. Then the vo volume icon uh, was already showing, so the arch icon. But to get the disk label right, you cannot simply uh, put a text file .disk label in there uh, because it's some binary format. Instead you need a tool called Mactel boot which you can find on GitHub. And then you get an executable called HFS bless. And if you call this function uh, on, on the partition, um, you get the label on the, uh, in the EFI boot, uh, e boot menu. So that's really cool. It just gives a nice touch, I think, to to the system and to to the to the boot menu because it lo uh, it looks very legit and professional. <laughs> As I told you so far, the machine is running really fine with Arch. <clears throat> I have only one problem, and that's a standby. Standby and suspend to disk is not working. But I'm pretty sure that this is a problem um, because I'm running Arch from the SD card. Normally this should work fine, so so that's a problem that annoys me the most currently. But yeah, um, it's I'm pretty sure it's because of the SD card. And uh, the second problem is there is no driver for the webcam, so you need you need an USB webcam if you want to Skype or anything. So um, yeah, that's a bit annoying too. It's actually pretty pretty good. Uh, so most of the stuff works and all the important stuff works really good. I'm, I'm impressed from the system, but I'm not sure if I want to use it as my main system. Mainly because uh, I don't want a dual boot setup where I have to boot into OS X uh, one or two times per day or multiple times per day. Just because I need an application which is not available under Linux. Yeah, I think I'm not quite ready to switch to Linux yet back again, but uh, I like GNOME 3 a lot and I like how, how nice everything works and it's the system is very fast all, uh, although it's running from SD card so I, I have no speed complaints at all the applications start fast and I'm really impressed with that with the general performance just by using the system for everyday stuff that's a big thumbs up there. Um, it's really, really nice. So it's another day later, and I want to give you a final conclusion on this project. You can get mostly everything to work uh, on this machine under Arch Linux, except the webcam. The webcam is the only exception. As well as uh, the battery, the battery performance won't be as good as under OS X. Despite all the power saving stuff um, that we did, in the video, um, I noticed that the machine gets warmer when, for example, when you're just browsing or watching YouTube and stuff like that, um, you notice that the machine gets warmer and you will lose about maybe, I would say about 20, per 20 to 30 percent, depending on what you're doing on your usual battery time. So for me, I most of the time get between 8 and 10 hours uh, on, on the MacBook Air with the 3 year old battery and uh, under Arch I got about maybe 4 to 6 hours, more, more 5 to 6 hours but, um, but that's with using a special video player which uh, supports hardware decoding for YouTube videos and stuff like that so and yeah it's, it's just a, a lot like these Optimations, which they just did uh, perfectly in OS X to get this awesome battery life, and um, Linux is not quite there yet. 
but the battery is still uh, the battery performance is still pretty good and um, it's not too bad I think and uh, yeah the, all the stuff is just uh, to get used to the system um, and uh, find the applications you need I think so if you want to use Arch on, on the MacBook it's uh, I'm not the first to do it there are a lot of people do that it's a very nice laptop Arch is a very nice operating system and they match pretty good. Maybe someday I will do a follow-up video, maybe someday I will switch back to Linux and uh, then there will be a video about it. But until the next time, take care and have fun!